Good afternoon, uh, everybody, uh, or good evening in Georgia. It's my great pleasure to welcome you also on behalf of Annette Hoffman and Gerhard Wolf to our next seminar, which is part of a lecture series, uh, Aesthetics, Art and Architecture, uh, organized by the Historisches Institute in Florence in collaboration with the Chubinashvili National Research Center for Georgian Art Studies and Heritage Preservation. Today's our speaker is Professor Zaza Svetladze, who is the head of the Institute of Art History and Theory at Ivane Javakishvili Tbilisi State University. Here he is also an editor of the Studies in Humanities Proceedings of the Faculty of Humanities of Tbilisi State University. Before taking this position, back in 2006, Zaza Skirtladze was a head of art history department at the Theological Academy of Georgia and for 25 years, a senior research fellow at Chubinashvili Institute of Georgian Art Studies. He may, his main research interests are medieval art of Georgia and the Christian East, cultural, cultural inter, interrelations in the South Caucasus and desert, desert monasteries. But his work in these fields is very diverse and extremely prolific. Uh, today I will underline only the mainstreams of his uh, research. So to my knowledge, his earliest passion was David Gareja, a deserted monastery on the Georgia-Azerbaijani border to which Zaza Svetladze dedicated numerous articles and several books, some together with Darejan Kodeashvili. Publications cover, cover David Gareja's epigraphical evidence, murals, martyrs and martyria, different aspects of the site history, conservation issues, and archaeological da data. Zaza Svetladze is also a founder and the head of da uh, David Gareja's Studies Center. Another field of his long lasting academic interest is devoted to the representation of historical personalities in medieval Georgian visual culture. That was reflected in many of his publications. So I will name few, uh, like the, another portrait of Quintamar, unknown donor image in Otta Ecclesia, history in images, donor figures in medieval Georgian art, and many others. In this context, I have to mention his project, History in Images, Corpus of Historical Figures in Georgian Art, which is coming in seven volumes, two of which will be coming published this year, and I'm sure this will be a very important contribution to our understanding of medieval history and culture in general. Another stream of his academic research is focused on early painting traditions in Georgia, on establishment of system of church decoration in Georgian art in a very broad Eastern uh, Christian context. That included a very solid two mono monographs on the murals of Telovani Holy Cross and on Otta Ecclesia, and also uh, my beloved paper, um, Article of Oldest Paintings in Oshki Church. And here I have also to mention his another project that is the electronic database of medieval Georgian murals, which was activated recently on Tbilisi State University web. And to my knowledge, the English version is also under the construction. The iconography and representation of the Virgin Mary, the icon painting in, ge in general, is a main subject of his many publications, but here I want to mention his upcoming two-volume publication on the hexaptic of the Monastery of St. Catherine on Mount St. Sinai, which we were discussing during our previous seminars with Maria Lidova. He has been working his methodology also on using the archival ma material and also the early scholarship interest in the early scholarship was also reflected in many publications and 
I will mention Ahiza Cathedral, the Ops decoration of Ahiza Cathedral and the recent publication of materials for the history study of Anchi icon and Sevilla and Tzilkani icon of the Virgin. So no, uh, I'm, 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 it's impossible to, of course, to list all his publications. So for this purpose, you, you can go to his Academia webpage. Um, and at the last um, but not least, um, mentioning the cultural interrelations in the South, South Caucasus, I have to, to uh, emphasize the last project, uh, the project he is going to present today. So, and uh, when we were uh, choosing the, um, we were talking with our prospective um, speakers, we were giving them flexibility to choose the subject. But uh, I was very subjective and never asked about Onizaza what he was wanted to talk about. And uh, I, I, I just asked him to talk about Ani. And here I was very subjective because um, this is the project. I was part of it and I'm very grateful. For, for this opportunity, which is this three volume, I have it here. If you can see this three volume monograph on the history uh, of and cultural heritage of Ani from the Georgian perspective. And I'm not going to take more time and uh, ask uh, Zaza Svetladze to, to, to develop, um, uh, to tell us more about, about, this, uh, about this work. And meanwhile, I want to ask you to mute your um, uh, microphones during the presentation. And after the um, talk, uh, Annette Hoffman, my colleague, will uh, lead the moderate the discussion section. So thank you very much. Uh, Professor Svetlade, floor is yours. Oh, Irina, thank you so much uh, for such, uh, such a detailed so introduction of my activities and uh, my interests. So I'm slightly confused even so to hear so much about myself. And uh, I'm grateful to all organizers of uh, this series of seminars in which uh, you kindly ask me to participate with the topic about Ani and Georgia, the evidence of cultural heritage. And one might ask uh, what's, what's about this uh, topic and uh, what's about this study. And uh, I will start uh, with uh, the uh, citation that uh, Ani, the city of the thousand and one churches, had been for centuries a crossroad where the political and economic interests of different countries intersected. Uh, the strategic location of uh, I'm sorry, I have to we have to uh, we have to find a way to change the, the here. Yeah. Uh, 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 so the strategic location of the city and the trade routes passing through it represented one of the main reasons making it a constant, constant debatable ground for the Armenia and the Georgian kingdom on the one hand and for the Seljuk Turks and the Byzantine Empire on the other hand. The countries of various ethnic confessional traditions and cultures had been making political and economic endeavors along with introducing their own religious and cultural vision to gain a foothold in Ani. The city was developed into a unique multicultural environment in the creation of which, along with the Armenian and Byzantine, they were also actively involved the elements of Seljuk and Georgian cultures. Important materials in this regard have been obtained as a result of three-year projects supported by Shota Rustaveli National Science Foundation and the National Agency of the Georgian Cultural Heritage Preservation and implemented by the Institute of Art, History and Theory of Ivan Javakishvili, Tbilisi State University in collaboration with several other institutions in Georgia and in beyond. And uh, as uh, to keep time, uh, uh, I think uh, we, will, we will upload the entire content of this three volume uh, book uh, and uh, list of participants tomorrow on Academia Edu. So everyone uh, who is interested uh, in the participants and the subjects and the topics uh, joined in this uh, three volume uh, uh, book uh, will see it very soon. 
The results of uh, the implementation, as I said, uh, of this project in many ways improves the overall picture of ANI as a place of meeting and interrelation of variety of cultural circles. At the same time, it uncovers a new exhaustive angle of ethno-confessional and cultural processes in wide-ranging region of South Caucasus on the relation of both the Georgian state and the Georgian church to those processes and in general on the place and role of Georgian cultural heritage in these processes. And I must underline that the aim of this project was not to single out the Georgian from the entire multi-party milieu of ANI, but to discuss the place of the Georgian heritage in it, and consequently to show the mutual impacts outgoing from this cross-cultural relationship. Of course, uh, there were separate studies touching the aspect of the relationship of Hani and the Georgia. One of the most prominent of these is uh, Nicole and Michel Thierry's well-known book on the Church of Tigran Onens and its frescoes, but this aspect never been studied or discussed uh, comprehensively and uh, exhaustively. Today's my paper, in fact, is a presentation of the results of the above mentioned project. Its results were published, as Irina said already and showed you, in the three volume book a few months ago. But also, also I must uh, add that uh, during the implementation of this project, fulfillment, uh, the conference, uh, international conference was organized and the volume proceedings of this uh, conference uh, were published and also results of archival work with the St. Petersburg colleagues uh, about uh, the Church of uh, Tigran uh, uh, frescoes uh, of uh, Nikolai Sicho also was prepared and published uh, here in Tbilisi. So these uh, study results can be divided uh, in uh, two parts. Now, uh, the first of uh, them is a, a collection of studies, while the second one uh, are uh, sources and materials uh, puzzled together. So it might seem uh, unusual, but I will start from the second part. So it is from the sources and materials in one thing, uh, which, uh, which starts with the sources. And uh, I must underline that Armenian, Georgian, Arabic, Persian, Greek, Syriac, Ottoman, Latin, and Russian narrative sources were gathered, covering the period from the early Middle Ages until the early 19th century inclusive. All this reflects the political, religious, confessional, and cultural processes related to the Georgian heritage occurring in Ani and historical Chirac. In its turn, uh, the section is divided in separate subsections, likewise uh, as uh, shared sanctities, or Bagrationis of Tawaklarjeti and Bagratunis of Chirac, Abkhazian kings and Bagratunis of Chirac as well, and the Kingdom of Ani and uh, the region of uh, lower part of Georgia, Kremok Hartley, and Sveta Catholic State and Ani as well. And afterwards follows the long row of sources uh, covering the period from 11th century, especially from the second half of uh, 12, uh, from the attempts of Georgian kingdom to embrace this region in the boundaries of, uh, uh, in the uh, sort of borders of uh, the states, uh, and uh, uh, continued with the uh, second half of 14th century, and then, uh, then uh, uh, sporadically until the beginning of uh, Russian imperial rule in the South Caucasus in this early 19th century, and it's divided also in separate subchapters. Uh, following it is the uh, large section uh, dedicated to the inscriptions and uh, uh, it's uh, very well known that there are uh, inscriptions uh, connected with the relationship of Ani and Georgia uh, in uh, Armenian and as well as in uh, Georgian. I will start uh, from Georgian ones uh, and I uh, will show you most, uh, most well-known uh, inscriptions, sketch of most uh, well-known inscription of uh, Catholicos uh, Epiphane of uh, 1218. Uh, uh, which was uh, uh, placed on the south facade of the Georgian church and uh, found during the archaeological excavations led by Nikolai Mar in August uh, 1910. Uh, the stones with this carved inscription were kept in the depository of uh, Ani 
antiquities in Manuchi mosque, but uh, then uh, during the Second World War, uh, First World War, uh, were lost and uh, no data, uh, there was no any information about them. Uh, the Turkish-French expedition uh, report of uh, 1998 uh, uh, so informed that uh, five stones of the lost inscription were inserted in the walls of the inhabitants of the village of Shakli in the immediate proximity of the city site. Uh, but uh, then uh, there were no attempts to find and record these stones in subsequent years. So in August uh, 1217, we found uh, three of these stones uh, in the structures of local inhabitants. And uh, these um, examples uh, gave possibility to study and discuss individual characteristics, paleography, and uh, other, other features of the lapidary inscription. Likewise, the text of one of the most important epigraphic documents uh, in Georgian again, in Ani, the fragmentary Georgian inscription of Sahmadin, Paron Sahmadin, of 1288, executed on the southern facade again on the Georgian church was revised based on the unique photograph kept in the Georgian mm -hmm. National Museum, as well as uh, the archival materials of Ekutime Takaishvili and Nikolai Mar kept in the National Center of Manuscripts. This resulted in establishment of the surviving part of the inscription. Armenian inscriptions, Sufani, of course, they were recorded and published long ago in 1966 by Josef Orbeli. I, I'm, now I'm showing you the uh, negative uh, kept in National uh, Museum of Georgia. It's an inscription, uh, uh, tetralingual inscri inscription on the um, Mosque of Manuchi, and uh, also in other, in other Georgian inscription of Tigran on Enz, uh, uh, placed on the Western facade of, uh, of the Church of St. Gregory with its sketch so, uh, recently. So, about Armenian inscriptions, uh, uh, they were recorded by Joseph Orbeli in the Corpus of Armenian Inscriptions of Ani, but in the process of incorporation of part of this material into the entire body of our project materials and consequently studying them, new facts revealed some of those, uh, these being crucial for the entire picture connected with the subject of the study. For example, Based on the inscription of Atabak Amirspasalar Shanshe Shahansha, dated back to 1251, scholars formulated suppositions on the confessional changes of the Church of St. Gregory and the stages of its painting. But the exact location of this inscription remained uncertain, and uh, this uh, seemed uh, quite strange because uh, all, all facades uh, of this church preserved very well. The study proved that the inscription is a result of erroneous interpretation of the inscription of Tsigno Bartukutses Mate, placed on the eastern facade of the Church of St. Gregory and dated back to 1310. This interpretation takes its origins from the incorrect translation of the above inscription made by Andrei Muraviov in the mid 19th century. And since then, it continued so to refer to this inscription as a as a separate separate epigraphic monument, which is not true. So all three Armenian dedicatory inscriptions were included in the corpus, uh, the same corpus by Orbeli, uh, and uh, supposed to belong to the Church of Saint Gregory. But uh, but during the fieldwork. Uh, these inscriptions were recording on the walls of another structure, the Church of Holy Virgin's Convent, down near the riverbank. Now about uh, fresco inscriptions, factually all Georgian fresco explanatory inscriptions preserved in Ani, and these are collected uh, in the Church of uh, St. Gregory of Honens. Over 160, I underline, 160 preserved to date or photographed, recording on the photographs at the beginning of 20th century on the wall paintings of uh, this church were recorded and deciphered. Most of those inscriptions remained unknown, while those that were known, no more than two dozens, <coughs> dozens uh, have, had been read partially on inaccurately. The graphical outlines 
of all the inscriptions were done. Accordingly, several hetero unknown images, compositions and figures of saints where I identified. For example, now I, I'm showing you the chancel and among other church fathers, the image of Photios, Patriarch of Constantinople, was identified, which has the also important role in the uh, in the uh, so in the discussion of the entire entire idea emphasized in the, the chancel murals uh, in the lower part of the chancel murals, for example. This gave a possibility also to discuss the overall iconographic program of the murals and the main aspects of the major concept revealed in it uh, a much larger in a much larger scale. This equally concerns the site of St. Gregory as well as the accents marked in this part of the painting. Besides scratched on the walls of the Church of St. Gregory, pilgrim inscriptions were recorded in study. And it's remarkable that uh, these are uh, inscriptions, short texts uh, of uh, 13th, 14th century, and uh, all of them are in Georgian. Now, special thanks goes to Kars Museum administration and the members of uh, the staff. They did everything so that assist the project group while acquaintance with the funds of the museum. This resulted in collection, recording and study of important materials, among which are over 70 coins of the reign of Queen Tamar and Rusudan, Queens Tamar and Rusudan. So this is a spell, the period of incorporation of Ani and historic Chirac in the area of Georgian state. And one more interesting uh, uh, item, and this is a quite uh, interesting piece of uh, uh, stone carving, uh, composition of crucifixion with a huge head of Adam and uh, with the explanatory and at the same time dedicatory Georgian inscription of the early Ivic dates. And uh, this relief can be dated uh, by the earlier than 12th, 13th century period. I, uh, we don't exclude that uh, the after, after the continuation of the work in Karls Museum, because of time limits, we had no this possibility. Some other items uh, could be found also, like uh, ceramic or some other, or in the, uh, among the embroideries or other, other items also connected with the relationship, uh, connected with the relationship of Ani and Georgia. Now about archival materials. Of no less interest are these uh, materials uh, on the relations, um, as uh, and uh, as well as about the Georgian antiquities in Ani. Uh, these uh, documents uh, mostly are of the turn of 19th, 20th centuries, and they are stored in the, in the depositories of Tbilisi and Saint Petersburg. And you see now on the screen. Uh, the diaries, the field diaries of Dmitry Bakradze, who visited Ani in uh, 1871 and then uh, uh, in the longest spell uh, in 1881 and collected the very interesting materials on Georgian antiquities uh, of the city side. This is a file uh, of, uh, the, 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 with this set of documents reflecting the ineffective attempts uh, for the recreation of the Christian Orthodox service and establishment of the monastery in the Church of St. Gregory. The documents embrace the spell between 1884 and 1891, the period when the Karls region together with Daoklajeti became a part of Russian Empire after the Russian-Turkish War. Uh, the documents kept in the archive also confirmed that uh, despite all the efforts and the hard work of the part of Georgian church dignitaries and the support of the exarch, supreme ecclesiastic representatives appointed by Russian church at that time, as well as the synodal office, the secular military representatives of the Russian empire either did not have any interest in this issue or didn't want to solve it positively. Maybe, maybe here played the also role, the interests of Russian empire to uh, have a uh, stability in this region based on the local population by the time when they, this is a quite tight and so story. Uh, and uh, uh, 
Uh, in, other, in other one, uh, I told you the, about, uh, uh, this was perhaps um, after the, the recommendation of uh, St. Petersburg's uh, professors, uh, so that uh, Nikolai Mar invited in um, 1911, uh, young but already experienced uh, scholar and uh, restorer, who had experience of work in, uh, in Russia, in the churches and murals. Nikolai Sicho, uh, in uh, the few decades, um, notwithstanding the difficulties in his life, uh, most famous restorer in Russia, who, uh, this was a talented man, and uh, who described in detail everything. So in the church of uh, St. Gregory of uh, Honens, and also the uh, fragments of the fresco, uh, painting frescoes, uh, discovered during the uh, excavations. Uh, this is the Saint, uh, Church of St. Gregory of Bartagek. Uh, the, the fragments of uh, the Church of Bartagek he published, but, uh, but during the decades, uh, these materials, the unique materials, uh, a very detailed description and uh, recorded all inscriptions, all fresco inscriptions, although he didn't know Georgian, but uh, it seems that uh, Mar helped him in translation also because there are Mars had written, written some remarks. So uh, this remains unpublished and uh, with the colleagues uh, from St. Petersburg's, uh, these materials first uh, were published as a single book and then were inserted in, in the uh, entire three volume publications. And of course, of course, uh, also, also very important materials. Uh, this is more than 120 unique photograph negatives taken by Alexander Ruinashvili and Dmitry Yermakov at the end of the 19th century stored at the National Museum of Georgia and depicting the Ani site architectural or epigraphic monuments still preserved by the time. And also, also uh, photographs and negatives kept in St. Petersburg's um, uh, Institute of the History of uh, Material Culture in the archive of uh, Mar, uh, depicting the uh, working process. And also this type, I will show you uh, this type of photographs. These are children of uh, um, Nikolai Mar in the looking from the Karasis, uh, famous uh, jacks uh, so found in Ani and studied by Georgi Chubinashvili later. So uh, these are uh, these are sources and documents uh, used for the study and for the implementation of our project. Now, as I mentioned already, the second part, the first part consisting in two volumes uh, uh, is dedicated to the studies of uh, different issues. So first of all, this is an essay dedicated to the historiography covering the period from early 19th century until uh, 1920s and showing changes in the attitude towards the antiquities of Ani and among these, the materials that are reflecting a relationship with Georgia in, in different aspects of the Georgian cultural heritage. Naturally, in this respect, the most productive this, uh, was the spell from uh, 1892 until 1917, the period of the functioning of the archaeological expedition uh, in Ani and uh, led by Nicolas Smar, and uh, it's very well known. Among other, his uh, younger colleagues uh, were also Georgi Chuvinashvili and David Kipshidze, and they were participating in the expedition, while other colleagues, Ivan Echavakishvili and Vukol Berize visited this site. This resulted in preparation of a number of studies dedicated to different monuments of the material culture of the city site. Mm -hmm. So, for example, so-called, I showed you already, Karasis, large jugs uh, with the characteristic carvings on them, as well as uh, big work, uh, unfinished work, uh, published later, decades later, about the caves and cave complexes, also about epigraphic monuments. Uh, uh, these are uh, un unpublished also materials of Ivan Javakishvili, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the other part of uh, this uh, study project is the history history, uh, a research and political history, historical and ecclesiastical geography mm -hmm. funny uh, was performed uh, in the frames of this project. It is divided in separate thematic subchapters, touching different aspects, for example, boundaries of Ani Shirak country, physical and economical geography, routes, political geography, 
ecclesiastic and ethnic geography, the, the Georgian community of Ani and the history, aspect of ethnocultural history of Ani, etc. This is a living storytelling in which different aspects interwoven, thus creating an overwhelming picture of different stages of the history of the city and the region in general. The urban life, funny, is a borderless theme which um, uh, deserves the work of the whole institution for years. Now, during our project implementation, based on the literary evidences, archaeological material, as well as quite intensive fieldwork, the attention was focused on some aspects, routes and gates, trade, planning of the city and its uh, infrastructure, the local production and input. All this shows close affinity of Ani with other centers of the Caucasus, the cities with the similar character and the similar fate, like uh, Tbilisi, Ganja, and Dvin, the Manisi, Rustavian, et cetera, et cetera. And further, further study is dedicated to the fortification of Ani. Uh, it's a very well known three phases of the construction of these. Uh, now this impressive, impressive structure and the third phase uh, of construction process coincide with the epoch of the incorporation of the region in the Georgian state, namely, this is the reign of Queen Tamar and uh, her successors. Of course, this could not be considered as a part of the Georgian cultural heritage. But the scale of the building activity, as well as the way of the fashioning uh, the newly built huge walls and the towers, uh, are remarkable in many ways. The initiative to rebuild the defense system of the wealthy city might have several preconditions, but the way of the realization of this ambitious and outstanding by its solution project could not be planned, organized, and completed without direct support of the supreme authorities of the kingdom and involvements, direct involvements, and it's known from the documents and the epigraphic monuments, at least, of their local subordinates. Uh, Ani architecture has one distinctive feature. The boundaries seem to have been erased here in terms of secular and religious affiliation. Uh, and the defense system, uh, is the elo eloquent uh, illustration of this. It carry an appearance of the church architecture, which is uh, primarily uh, determined by the quality and the character of this passé decorated masonry, and by the embellishment of walls and towers uh, with the multicolored crosses, hatchcars, and inscriptions. The chapter, the section, of the study dedicated to the ecclesiastic architecture is one of the largest parts of the project. And this is perfectly understandable. The monuments discussed, namely the Georgian church, the chapel of the citadel, the cathedral, the church of St. Gregory of Conance, the church of the fortress of the virgins, the so-called monastic chapel of the virgins, and finally the church of St. Gregory of Pachtageg were built or renovated in the course of the domination of the Georgian kingdom, namely during the local rule of Karkzelis. Some of them have in common a similar quality of construction, as well as similar repertoire of the festae decoration and the stylistic features. All this makes it probable that they were not only created in one period, as evidenced at least by the inscriptions, but their construction may be related to a certain circle of builders. Built in different parts of the city, these churches make a bright example of the Ani local school of architecture. Each of them embodied uh, the stylistic features of the ecclesiastical and secular architecture of the period of Karkzelis. The reliefs of these structures have some features in common with the motifs extended within contemporary Christian and Islamic art. They remind us uh, uh, of the decoration of the Georgian monasteries in Tau Klajeti, where zoomorphic figures are widely used, as well as the various floral and geometric motifs. Similarly, these motifs can be found on the facades of caravansarais throughout the South Caucasus and Anatolia. Within the Ani school, epochal building culture was formed, 
which had a multifaceted influence uh, on the development of the regional local architecture. Among its achievements, the most important is the comprehensive nature that characterizes uh, the art during the Mkhardzelis rule. It's uh, the period I mentioned already. And of course, uh, the murals of uh, the Church of St. Gregory created and partially renovated during the 13th century became a subject of special study and it's, it's, uh, it is given in a separate volume. This is obvious given the prominence of these murals as compared with the monuments associated with the most important aspects of the Caucasian studies. The painting has attracted um, undiminishing uh, interest of scholarly circles in decades. Different uh, opinions were expressed concerning the period of the creation and the origin of painting, as well as the ethno-confessional interrelations and the in intentions revealed in it. The study of the painting, during which about 150 graphical schemes of the frescoes were done, highlighted new aspects uh, on the issues pertaining uh, to its creation. The iconographic program of the painting is based uh, on the traditional pattern of the paintings of domed churches formed in Byzantium and particularly in Georgia over the centuries. All this is revealed both in the features of selecting and placing the images and in emphasizing certain themes within the limits of the general idea manifested by means of the integrity of these images. Considering all this, one should discuss the tendency of elaborating and enriching the program of painted decoration, which alongside the changes brought by the epoch, the representation of the extensive cycle of Christ, Christ's passion, for example, is revealed in the presence of the extensive cycle of the patron saints of the church, as well as in emphasizing, emphasized prevalence of the individual images of saints, especially holy warriors and uh, anchorites. In this regard, the lifestyle, life cycle of the patron of the church, apostolic saint of Armenia, Saint Gregory, represented in the second and third registers of the west arm of the church, is essential. It is remarkable that this is the only fresco cycle depicting the saint's life and deeds known by the present. Besides, it is of essential importance for the clarification of ethno-confessional origin and the orientation of the painting. The series of scenes is based uh, on the treatise known under the authorship of Agatangelus retelling the story of Christianization of Armenians. The life cycle of St. Gregory counts 17 compositions. It starts with the saint's appearance before the king through that tribunal and series um, uh, of his martyrdom and ends with the episode depicting the disease of the saint. All compositions of the cycle are accompanied by Georgian and some really explanatory inscriptions, which were also uh, recorded in this cycle. Within the study, uh, the content and the um, uh, nomination of individual scenes were clarified by comparison uh, of the primary literary sources, which I mentioned already. And uh, uh, I think uh, if I have some time limits, I will, I will ex uh, put the accent on two aspects only uh, of this life cycle in connection with the uh, relationship of Ani and Georgia. Uh, one of the main innovations of the research um, uh, is a more exact definition of the content of some of the composition, as I said. Um, and uh, in this regard, the composition located in the second register of the Northern Bay of the West Arm of the Church of, uh, is of special importance. Here, King Strat riding his horse is depicted together with his retinue. Among the King's escort, three figures are outstanding. Uh, with their rich clothes and uh, headwear, together with the whom servants are depicted. The riders are equipped with the shields and spears. The composition turned into the subject of scholars' special interest since the beginning of the 20th century. Attention was paid to the three figures among the king's escort, prominent from others by their iconographic features. They were taken for the images of Iberian, Abkhazian, and Albanian kings, by Nicholas Marr. Marr entitled the composition as a single of St. Gregory offered to Caesarea, Caesarea by King Trudat and Caucasian kings. 
He was assuming that the life cycle of St. Gregory presented in the church was based on the Arabic version of the saint's life, which he and Ivani Javahishvili discovered in the library of St. Catherine's Monastery on Sinai, on Sinai, and as an elder scholar, Mar published it. The scholar was dating uh, this version by the 7th, 8th centuries and uh, assumed that uh, it was created by Armenian diocesans or Chalcedonians of Tau Klarjeti. The above mentioned scene uh, in Mars' uh, assumption proved uh, the theory according to which all three Caucasian nations, Albanians, Armenians, and Georgians, were converted by St. Gregory. Also, St. Gregory's side as well as the painting of any church was to be considered in the context of the art of Chalcedonian Armenians. Mars' theory, based on Arabic version of St. Gregory's life cycle, didn't prove to be acceptable for the part of scholars. Some of them didn't share his identification of the composition either. And this continued during the decades. Nevertheless, the viewpoint uh, that the composition was based on the theory according to which St. Gregory should have baptized these three nations existed also for a long time. And the above mentioned scene served as one of the key arguments for this. In regards to this problem, the materials obtained during the expedition uh, is uh, uh, to be of uh, substantial significance. Uh, sorry, significance. In particular, in the upper part of the composition, the fragment of explanatory Asomtaruli inscription was identified according to which the content of the scene becomes clear. The inscription reads, Akatrdat eshud ikmana, here Trudat turned into a wild boar. The sequence of narration in the sack and the newly identified inscription allowed for the identification of this scene. In this regard, it is also important that it is preceded, preceded by the martyrdom of Ripsimian virgins, for which the king was punished. And the following episode is a liber liberation of St. Gregory and taking him out of the deep pit, after which Turdad was cured and turned back into a human. That is how uh, it is narrated in the history of conversion of uh, Armenia II. The explanatory inscription of the composition proved that it depicts a well-known episode of the history of conversion of Armenia, hunting of pagan King Trudat and his hunt uh, turning into a wild boar. This puts uh, an end to the different viewpoints and discussions related to the identification of the composition, thus clarifying that the theory related to the conversion of the Caucasian nations by St. Gregory has nothing in common with this composition itself, as well as uh, with the cycle presented in the painting in any church of St. Gregory. Multi-parted concept of the painting of the church of St. Gregory and speci especially, speci uh, specifically of the uh, life cycle of the local saint have to be sought in the context of various much more substantial prerequisites. These prerequisites uh, on a certain historical stage, namely by the 12th, 13th centuries, were associated with the purposefulness of the Georgian state and the Georgian church. And the last, uh, from the viewpoint of ethno-confessional relationship reflected in, in the murals, uh, the composition preserved, uh, uh, presented on the, uh, on the east wall of the north bay of the west arm is essential. <clears throat> it depicts the case stage of Christianization of Georgia, the miracle of um, the life-giving pillar occurring in Tsheta, or capital of Georgia. This is the most well-known episode of the establishment of the life-giving pillar during the building of the first church on Christ tunic, the major and holiest relic, which according to the legend was owned by Georgian church since the first century. The life-giving pillar erected by angels is depicted on the center of the composition, and you see it is sketch. And uh, there are inscriptions also uh, telling uh, the Saint Nino, here life-giving pillar, women who met Nina were scared, etc., etc. So the image of establishment of Georgian church with its uh, sacred significance, 
appears as a, one of the major images for visitor worshiper in the iconographical program of the painting of the Church of St. Gregory. It occupies uh, the area of two registers, thus it can be read prominently among other images uh, of the west arm of the church. For over the hundred years, the composition remains the subject of special interest and extensive judgment for scholars. In particular, the place of the composition in the series of uh, compositions uh, of the scenes uh, in the West Arm, as well as the related indications um, in the overall context uh, program of the painting of the church are viewed in different ways. For example, uh, such a solution was explained by Chalcedonian orientation of the donors and the executors of the painting, or friendly relations uh, towards Georgians expressed by Armenians, or aspiration of stressing the idea of historical unity of Armenian and Georgian churches. It is essential that the scene is considered by some scholars at the last, as the last culminating story of the life cycle of St. Gregory. However, it has nothing in common with the history of the conversion of Armenia. Ultimately, actually all opinions uh, were related to the theory of Christianization of Caucasian nations by St. Gregory. As a result of identification of the image of the tunic of Christ, in the composition, it becomes obvious that the composition appears as the indicative illumination of the Christian Orthodox teaching in the overall context of the mural composition. Depiction of Christ's tunic represents a manifestation of long lasting Orthodox orientation of the Georgian church. Christ's tunic uh, himself uh, was considered as one of the major confirmations of the truth of the teaching of Orthodox diaphysic church. In this aspect, the significance of the image becomes even more remarkable in regard to the story of establishment of Armenian church in St. Gregory's site. Depiction of the symbol of incarnation, tunic, as the evidence of the two natures of God primarily implies in itself demonstration of Georgian church being Orthodox, and I'm quoting, having an uh, unshakable foundation of true faith and of quotation. Meanwhile, introduction of the theme of establishment of Georgian church is one of the strong accents alongside uh, the, the theme of Christianization of Armenian church was aiming an accentuation of necessity of Caucasian confessional unity. These and several other issues are discussed in this three volume book an English version of which uh, is under our preparation and we hope very much that uh, this will appear quite soon. And uh, also I, I will add that uh, uh, this project uh, was completed, but of course uh, there are several issues to be continued and I hope several generations and the colleagues will continue studies uh, in this direction and uh, some other new and important materials will be revealed uh, on this direction. Thank you very much for your attention.